Hello everybody, thank you so much for being here. I'm excited to share with you our topic for today, which is going to be the MEX Japanese Government Scholarship. I'm excited to share this with you because that is my scholarship. This is the scholarship that changed my life. This is the scholarship that started everything. And without the scholarship, I wouldn't be here to share with you all of this information today. But the difference is that this one that I'm going to be talking to y'all is for undergraduate students. It is for the specialized training students and it's for the College of Technology students. When I got my scholarship, I did the research program, which was the pathway towards doing your bachelor's and your PhD. But this one is for undergraduate students. And the great thing about the scholarship, I have said it several times already before, it's fully funded. So you get a chance to get everything paid for when you get the max scholarship the only thing you have to do is show up with the embassy with your passport and you're good to go you do not pay for everything flight is there for you when you arrive in japan a cop is there waiting to get you when you get to your accommodation there is somebody ready you have a tutor to guide you throughout so oh, that's amazing first of all and then the second thing is that it gives you an opportunity to come study in this great country japan is an amazing place for a study abroad destination it gives you a chance to first of all be in a different culture learn a different language have friends from all parts of the world build your career build your life and also build you up as a person so you can now choose when you're done with your study do you want to stay in japan do you want to go somewhere else it has given you the foundation to be able to do that so i think coming to stay here uh, like study in japan is an amazing opportunity i should definitely grasp that opportunity so for undergraduate students for specialized training students and for college of technology students i am going to be taking you through a step-by-step -step guide on how this works i had to take time to study all of this because i was like Oh, okay, so what is the difference between the undergraduate program and the specialized training program and the College of Technology program? So I am going to be breaking it down such that you all understand everything that is going on in here, okay? Grab your pen and papers because you are going to need it. But before we go right into it, I am excited to tell you all that I have prepared worksheets for all of you who are going to be applying for the scholarship. Technology students, undergraduate students, uh, uh, the uh, specialized training students I have prepared a worksheet that you can go through step by step and it helps you like on this page you see the information and then on the next page it tells you this is what you should do here this is what you should do here and also I use like from my experience and then also studying a lot I have put guides on the things that you should avoid doing the mistakes that you should not make how to submit a perfect application for this because yes it's a fully funded scholarship it's a great opportunity so everybody wants it the next Japanese government scholarship is a extremely extremely competitive so i am creating these worksheets to guide you from the start right through till the end of it and also i work with students one-on-one -on -one to help them from the start of their scholarship applications right through to the end so if you want to work with me as well as if you want the link to the worksheets the links are in the description box click on it and then you can just get to the website and get all the details that you need in the meantime let's get to work okay so the first thing that i want you to pay attention to are the application guidelines so you see here application guidelines Japanese government scholarships undergraduate students and then on another form you're going to see application guidelines Japanese government max 2024 College of Technology students and then you see here you have application guidelines Japanese government scholarship specialized training college students which means that yes these are all students who have had high school diplomas but they are different those that are going to the specialized training program are different from those that are going to the undergraduate program as well as those that are going to the college of technology program and i'm going to try to explain it to you as best as i can okay so now let's get through it you have the, the what is an undergraduate student the first thing that you should pay attention to for those that are going to be undergraduate students you have two lanes of courses you are either studying social sciences and humanities courses which are like these are the various majors you have law politics pedagogy sociology literature history japanese language economics business administration others please don't choose others because if you choose others you're going to have a limited chances of getting admission into some universities and then now let's go to the natural sciences student their majors you have math physics chemistry electric and electronic studies and then you have the me mechanical studies, civil and engineering studies, chemical studies, 
uh, and then other fields don't choose other fields and then co agricultural studies hygienic studies and then medicine and dentistry so you see that you have the natural sciences lane and then you have the social sciences lane this is a little different when you look at the college of technology students because they only only have this subjects that they can study Mechanical engineering, electrical and electronic engineering, information, communication and network engineering, materials engineering, architecture, civil engineering, maritime engineering, and then other fields. Never choose other fields. So you see that uh, these students, these technology students, they have their number of programs that they, are, they can do is a bit limited. So make sure that you are sure of which one you are going in for. And then the specialized training program students, they have technology, personal care and nutrition, education and welfare, business, fashion and home economics, culture and general education. So can you see the difference in which field you choose? Undergraduate students, there is a difference from tech students as well as from the specialized training students. All of it differs. So let's get back to the undergraduate students and we go through preparation um, the thing is that with the undergraduate students, right, they say that each grantee will be enrolled in a preparatory education system uh, institution, Tokyo University of Foreign Studies, for those who are those who are social sciences and humanities and Osaka University for those that have chosen natural sciences. So this is where you can sort of see the pathways differ. If you choose to be an undergraduate student under the MEX scholarship program and you're coming in, you if you're a social sciences student for this, because we have a preparatory program and in this preparatory program you have to learn Japanese and other courses that are going to prepare you to study your undergraduate studies so if you come as a social sciences student you are going to be placed for that one year in a university called Tokyo University of Foreign Studies for social sciences student and if you choose that you want to study natural sciences you are going to be placed in Osaka University and in this first one year you are doing your education program you are doing your Japanese education program as well as other programs so please make sure you keep that in mind if you are going to be studying as an undergraduate student and then now you have uh, the things that are necessary you need to make sure that you check your university education and also with undergraduate students direct placement is possible which means that if your Japanese is good enough you can actually apply directly to the university which is something that College of Technology students cannot do and which is something that specialized training students also cannot do okay so undergraduate Students' qualification, nationality, age, academic background, Japanese language, health, arrival in Japan, all the, this information, it is similar to what you're going to find for the other students. For example, this is me on the page for College of Technology students. The things that are required, it is similar, okay? B by the way, you see they have, for example, nationality, age, academic background, Japanese language, health, arrival in Japan, all of the things are the same. And then it is also the same case for college of tech, uh, for a specialized training student. Specialized training students, they require the same thing. Nationality, age, academic background, Japanese language, health, arrival in Japan, all of this is different. All of this is the same. So all of you all go through the same things when it comes to the things that you have to submit and the application procedures, okay? All of it is the same. I was telling you all before, undergraduate students, you are going to go to Tokyo University of Foreign Studies for Social Sciences student and Osaka University for um, Natural Sciences student for that first one year, okay? Let's look at it for specialized training student. So it says here that for the specialized training students, let me see, preparation, education, each grantee will be enrolled at a preparatory education institute designed by MEXT for the first year of the scholarship period. This preparatory course is a one-year intensive course in Japanese language, Japanese affairs, and other necessary subjects. So you all, specialized training students, yes, you're going to have that one year also to study Japanese and other subjects, but you're not going to be placed in some university. You'll be placed somewhere else. It is the same thing also for College of Technology students. This is it, College of Technology students, preparatory period, each grantee will be enrolled at a preparatory education institution designated by MEX. And in that first year, you study language. So all of you get to study language. You get to study uh, different subjects to prepare you for your course to start, but you're going to be studying in different places, okay? Now let's get to the application forms. Let's get to the application forms because this is the thing that I really wanted you all to know. The majors that you can study are going to be different in case you're applying for, as an undergraduate student, a technology student. Your pathway 
ways to get into Japan and prepare for the programs, it's going to be a little, it's going to be a little different. And also, I think the other thing that is different, give me a second, let me figure out the next thing that is different, is that, yes, entrance exams, entrance exams is different. For example, for those that are studying um, undergraduate students, the, ex the entrance exam that you're going to write is social sciences, you're going to study, you're going to write English, Japanese, English, and math, end of story. Natural sciences student, depending on if you're A, B, or C, you're going to write Japanese, English, mathematics, chemistry, physics, or Japanese, English, mathematics, chemistry, and biology. So it depends on which natural science, where, which natural sciences program and where you fall in. This is, let's go to College of Technology students to figure out their exams that they are going to be writing. Because the exam is the core, the core part of this particular, uh, for undergraduate students. This exam is, it determines if you're going to get in or you're not going to get in. So it says that written subjects of academic exams, for those that are, uh, Mechanical engineering, electrical engineering. So these are the fields differ and then okay, the chosen field. So based on the field that you chose, you're going to be writing Japanese English Mathematics Chemistry, Japanese English Mathematics Physics, and then Japanese English Mathematics and either Chemistry or Physics. So this really depends on the program that you chose for technology students. You are going to have to write different exams. And as I was saying already, this is the core of your application. So you really, really have to pay attention to what exams I'm going to be writing and also how do I prepare for this exam. You need to be extremely careful about that. All right, let's talk about College of Technology students. So it says here, oh, for the specialized training students, the Japanese diplomatic missions will conduct first screening of applicants by means of examination of submitted documents written and an interview subjects written academic examinations will be taken by all applicants. So for the specialized people, you all are going to be taking Japanese, English, and mathematics. Everybody, Japanese, English, and mathematics. So you see that for the College of Technology students, the exams they are taking is based on your major. For the, the undergraduate students, the exams they are taking is, is different for social sciences students and for natural sciences students. But now, you have to pay attention to which one, which exam you're going to be taking based on the program that you choose to get into, okay? Now let's look at the application documents. So these are the application documents that you have to submit if you are going to be going in as a specialized training student. You have the application form, transcript, certificate, recommendation letters, and medical certificate, okay? That is what you have to submit. And then for College of Technology students, application form, transcript, certificate, recommendation letters, medical certificate, almost, almost the same thing, right? And then when we go to on the regular undergraduate students, you have the application form, direct placement form. The reason why they've put this dot here is for those students whose Japanese is good enough and they don't they don't want they just want to go straight into university and then academic transcripts school uh, certificates, recommendation letters, medical certificate. So you see that the documents across all of them are the same thing. Like you don't really see different documents that are required for one group as well as the other. You did, uh, the only thing that you see that is different in the process is actually uh, the exams that they have to write. So now let's look at the certificate of health form. So everybody Everybody applying, you'll have to submit this certificate of health, take it to a good medical practitioner, let them run all the tests, write their recommendations, and then you go submit this document. And then the recommendation letter form, you all have to submit this together with your transcripts and your certificates. So this is it here. Remember, you do not only have to submit just this particular, uh, this you don't have to submit this particular form. You can submit, the, the, they've written it at the end here. Any other formats of recommendation letters will be accepted. So you can either submit this uh, this this form to your professor who is going to write your recommendation or any other format is okay but you have to submit your certificate of health you have to submit your recommendation letters and then now you have to submit your application forms because your application forms is the form that they use to sort of understand your background remember based on the program you're applying for college of technology undergraduate program or whatever there is a sense of how many years of studies have you done? Have you done, for example, 12 years of studies? If you've done 12 years of studies, oh, they're looking at it like, all right, fine. This is this is what we are looking for, okay? If you've not done 12 years of study, they're like, hmm, this is not what we are looking for, okay? So now let's look at it. 
these are the application forms so here you have application form for japanese government make scholarship undergraduate students so this is how the form is first page you're just filling details about yourself second page you're writing about your study background and as i said already they want to see how many years of studies you've done so it's important that you go through this carefully and then also they now want you to choose the courses what are you applying for undergraduate students social sciences natural sciences remember depending on what your you what which one you choose you're going to write different entrance exams and you're going to be placed in different universities one is in tokyo the other is in osaka so please pay attention when you do that and then you also have to pay, you can actually make a choice like first choice second choice third choice what would you want to study first like for example if you're a social sciences student do you prefer economics first and then low low like which one and then now you have to this is also part of the core of your of your application i'm going to discuss this a bit later on so it says specify the reasons why you select your field of study first choice why this first choice you have to specify why this first choice why the second choice why the third choice and also what was the trigger for having an interest in japan you have to answer that and then the kinds of things that you would do to contribute to uh, japan and your home country you have to answer that and then you fill up all the information undergraduate students you are done you're done with the application form it's the same thing also for students that are college of technology the form looks very similar you give the information about yourself and then about your study background and all of the things your first choice your second choice your third choice why these choices you have to justify why japan you have to justify and how will you contribute to uh, making a cooperation between your country and that you have to write it out and end of form you're done and then the same thing it's the same thing also for uh, specialized training students same thing you start with providing your personal background information and then you go to your past history working history and then uh, what studies do you want to do what's your first choice what's your second choice why these choices why Japan so you see that the application forms that you all have to fill is pretty much the same the medical certificate is pretty much the same the recommendation letter is pretty much the same the difference really comes at the level of the exams that you all have to write okay those exams are those things that they are using now to just be sure of all right which student are we going to be chosen okay and based on your scores your scores are extremely important so there is also another form that gives you a breakdown of the various majors for example i'm going to show you here on the screen this is actually for specialized training students you have their technology for example remember they said first choice second choice third choice right so technology students it's like okay will you choose civil engineering and architectural and then step two uh choice two electrical and electronic engineering so you can see these are the choices that you're going to be making you can just pick one of those that you're interested in and it is actually also the same case for um the Te college of technology students so specialized training students is the same thing college of technology here are your options mechanical engineering which ones so first second third choice electric electrical and electronic engineering first second third choice you can choose from there so they've given you all the information that you need in order to choose now let's have a little discussion about how to answer the questions on why your why your major why did you choose Japan? Motivation for studying in Japan. Don't go talking about anime and Mount Fuji and uh, how you like Toyota cars. No, 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 that's not it. You have to state your motivation for studying in Japan in a way that it links to your particular uh, study topic. It can be about animes in case this thing is somehow related to your study for example i have always been interested in how in seeing how cultures change over time and how it is represented in in movies in media and in other countries or maybe in my country the culture has changed over the years and history has been told through cinema through uh, theater but i realized that in japan as years have gone by their culture and their history has been told through anime through manga so i'm interested in studying how history has changed over the years and how how it is taught in different cultures so now I want to study in Japan to see how this has been represented in uh, Japanese history has been represented in anime yeah perfect that is a motivation for you to want to come study in Japan right but if it is oh I always liked manga and I want to come here and I want to go to manga shops and uh, 
that's not going to cut it that is not going to cut it and what was the trigger for having an interest in japan this is also make sure you link it to your topic because that is extremely important in the worksheets i give you all tons of examples on how to answer these questions because i give you all hints i give you all prompts i give you all examples because this is the core of your application you need to justify why do you want to study what you want to study and also why do you want to study that thing in japan why is that necessary and then the other one is what kinds of things do you think you can contribute to japan and your home country through your experience studying in japan this is extremely important you guys because they are trying to get into your head about remember this scholarship is provided by a government and what governments do when they provide scholarship is that they want to see a level of return on investment it is not just charity you guys have always told you all oh, scholarships is not just charity Charity. whoever is the scholarship providing body they have a goal that they want to accomplish and how are you going to be an ambassador to help them accomplish that goal that is extremely important so you need to make sure that you explain for example let's go back to our topic that i was talking about before the how culture has been preserved over time using different media sources then you can now say by the time you're done with the program you would like to come up with a collaboration between uh, a particular particular media house in your country and animation production studios in Japan to see how we can blend through cultures that has changed over time because of the use of this media for them it is animation it is mangas but for us it is actually cinema and and, and movies so I want us to have like conversations and possible uh, exchange where we get to see how these cultures have been told in different parts of the world but using media Media, okay so you see how you are this person who is going to be some sort of in continuing the legacy of cooperation between your country and Japan even for students that are studying for example agriculture you want to go study in your country you've lived on a rice farm growing rice and everything and you know that in Japan the technologies that they use to grow rice is extremely advanced so you're interested in coming to Japan to see what is it about how they grow their rice which makes it very different so you see this is your justifying first of all the major that you want to study why you want to study that major in Japan and then contributing to the future you're coming and you're discussing the aspect of I want to by, by the time I'm done with my program I would like to see how we can integrate some of the technologies from Japan to rice cultivation in whatever part of the world you're from so you see how you link it all together right so I give you all so many prompts in the worksheets but I just want you I just want to tell you all like a bit of the things that how you should be thinking about it when you apply when you answer these particular questions because this form the core aspect of your application other thing that is extremely important that I want you all to pay attention to is that remember the difference why you're going to be chosen for the scholarship versus you're not going to be chosen lies in the exams that you write and the good thing is that they have a page where they provide past questions so if you come to study in japan.go.jp you're going to see here qualifying examinations i'm actually going to put the links to this in the worksheets so you can just click on it and go to the page so here you have the undergraduate students here you see you see you have the english exam mathematics mathematics b physics chemistry biology and then uh undergraduate students you also have so the based on the year that you're applying college of technology students these are your past questions specialized training students research students so you see you have exams for 2016 exams for 2015 exams for 2014 exams for and it can get longer you can if you search you're going to find so many more the core uh, undergraduate students specialized training students as well as college of technology students the core of your application is in answering those questions about why your study uh what, what was the trigger for japan and your motivation and how are you going to contribute to japan and and your country and then the other thing that is extremely important is this exams and i've spoken to so many students over the years i've asked them several questions and many students have said that the the getting it is about practice go through these past questions practice 
practice practice check if your answers are correct remember the multiple choice questions what are the formulas how do you answer this question practice several times and as you practice you get better and as you get better that is how your results are going to reflect it so undergraduate students specialized training students college of technology students practice 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 and that is what is going to separate you from the others that are applying for this make you stand out and you'll be granted the scholarship thank you guys so much for watching i hope that this was helpful if it was please consider subscribing to the channel and also please do want to share this video with some people your friend a brother a sister an auntie an uncle someone in your local church someone in your local community any high school graduate who is thinking about studying abroad on a fully funded scholarship, anybody that is considering studying in Japan, anybody that wants to apply to the next scholarship, please do want to share this video with them. And remember the worksheets that I have prepared for you all, they are in the description box. Click on it and it's going to help you from the start till the end of your scholarship application process. I also work with students one-on-one -on -one from the start to the end of your application. So if you want to work with me, the link is in the description box. Click on it and I'm going to be extremely happy to work with you all. Thank you all so much for being here. I'm going to see you all in the next one. Cheers.